Al, as we get into this next segment and continuing this discussion about how these markets work, and we talked about earlier, it's based off of supply and demand, which is how really anything works in life, works in real estate, works in pretty much anything we want to buy. If there's more demand for something, price will go up. If there's more supply of something, price will go down. They, they kind of talk a lot sure. about that mm-hmm. in the in the oil industry. So that might, people might relate to the oil industry. But when we talk about price charts and how that actually works on a price chart, it's it's understanding how to read that story. I mean, think about when you're, t- when you're teaching your kids how to read a story. They're sounding out the words. And once you're able to sound out the words and they're, they're they, they've, memorize what's coming next. So it's, it's about reading that story and identifying where possible possible entry points in the markets could be coming up, but also mm-hmm. being in those entry points before price actually get there. So you actually wait for price to come to you. Talk a little bit more about that, how that price chart really works and how you make those decisions based on the smart money movements and not just those the fear and greed. Right. Over time, as a trader or investor, the, the important thing is is price. It's when you enter and when you exit a trade. Those are the two key components. The, 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 the proper price is going to help you to not only lower the risk of a trade or an investment, but also it's going to give you the greatest opportunity to have uh, to, to ride as much of the profit potential as, as possible. And also it determines the quality of your protection, your risk management, which should be part of, of any trade. So that's an, that's an important component. How do you identify proper price? Well, the proper price point to get into something is when the market is either turning to go in your favor in a direction in your favor or continue to go in a certain direction. Now, how do you determine that? Well, the, the great thing for us, and, and this is what, you know, we try to keep this as simple as possible for our students. There are so many different strategies that that are sold out there that are provided in newsletters or in books that that people can, uh, you know, try to figure out. But uh, really, what is key is what moves price. Because when you think about it, if you buy something, whether it's a stock or a, you know whatever it is, a house. You want it to go up in value after you buy it. When you sell something, you'd prefer it to go down in value. So if you can identify where that the chance of that happening in your favor is great, that's really what will help you over time to you know be a consistent trader or investor. It happens in the stock market, and we can see it on a price chart based on institutional activity. Supply and demand. That's a fact you really can't argue. When there's more of supply of something, price is going to go down. When there's more demand, price will go up. And in the markets, it has to be enough. I mean, I can go out and I can buy something that's providing a little extra demand, but I'm not buying enough of it to really move the price of something, to, to see it on a price chart. But the institutions can. Goldman Sachs can. J.P. Morgan can. Warren Buffett can. And they do on a regular basis, which is the great thing for us. That is something that's repeatable. It's reliable. It's how they do business. Their their bottom line, their their profits for a lot of these big firms are based on their trading. Even though you look at a firm like Goldman Sachs, you know maybe they do some IPOs, some uh, mergers and acquisitions. They have clients that pay fees, but the majority of their profit comes from trading, and and that means that they are using you know hundreds of millions or maybe more dollars when they're putting a trade together but that's it's enough volume there it's enough clout to move the price and we can read that on a price chart you know in, in there's a difference between what the institutions are doing and maybe what a group of, of retail traders are doing we want to follow what the institutions are doing why is that well think about it they they spend millions of dollars a year on data and research they have sophisticated equipment that they use we don't have that and we don't need to have it we'll let them do the work they have a much better idea of what the true value of something is than you or i would and and we get our a value maybe based on what somebody else's opinion is or looking at at what's public data which is all the institutions have already acted on but the institutions know what the value of something is and they have the patience to wait until a, that price that that reflects the value is there on a price chart. And then we can watch, really, it's, it's like the institutions are almost telegraphing to us what they're doing. If they're buying, we can determine on a price chart 
whether it's an institution or maybe a novice uh, trader, a group of novices trading, uh, or whether they're buying or selling. And, and it's just like a radiologist reading an x-ray. We teach our students how to read a price chart. Everything you need to know is on that price chart. Yeah, it's all about having that those possible entry points. I mean, nothing is guaranteed, but if you have probabilities or odds in your favor, that just increases those. I said it already, mm -hmm. odds. And you want to trade like that smart money and not against them. A lot of people think that you need to beat the banks, beat Wall Street, the financial firms. We are not going to beat them. It takes millions and, and billions of dollars to actually move the markets. So when we trade like them, we're just jumping on their coattails. And when Al's right. talking about a price chart, we're identifying those that imbalance in, uh, in supply and demand, that imbalance of buyers and sellers but it's doing that at low risk, high reward, high probability entry points in the market. And that's typically at or near the turn in price. Al, so I talked about trading any asset in any market just recently here. And a lot of people know the stock because that's all they talk about on TV. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people that come to these investing classes want to learn more about stock trading. Well, the fact of the matter is stocks are very expensive right now. They're at all-time highs once again this week. So it's important to understand how to use leverage, how to be more capital efficient. Talk a little bit about these other assets that we're seeing so many people want to learn more about mm -hmm. because you have a couple perks there. You have markets that are open around the clock. So say people work during the day, they have the opportunity to trade at night. Also, you have that leverage. So once you get into those yeah, you know, Josh, a lot of people come in and, and they know about stock and they know about mutual funds. That's what they have been taught, if anything, about the markets. That's what they're comfortable with. You know, and, and we talk about this often. The stock market is the smallest of the financial markets. Yeah. Uh, the foreign exchange market, for example, what we call the Forex market, that trades over $5 trillion a day. That's more than all the stock markets combined. Uh, futures market, bigger than the stock market. Bond market, bigger than the stock market. But that's what people have been taught. And pr I think one of the reasons is that because of the mutual fund industry, that's mutual funds are, are made up of, of a basket of stocks. It's a grouping of stocks that, that maybe mimic something. It could be one of the indexes like the S&P 500 or the Dow. It might be technology or financials or healthcare. But they're made up of a grouping of stocks. And the mutual fund business is probably the easiest business for financial advisors to utilize with their clients because you can take a client's money when you come in and you meet with a financial advisor. Let's say you come in with a couple hundred thousand dollars. Number one, they're going to say, well, we need to get in the market right away. It's, it's not, we're not going to time the market. You can't, they're going to say you can't do that. <laughs> what we're telling you with our strategy that's exactly what we teach you how to do. It's our core strategy. But they're going to say, let's get it in the market. And what they're going to do many times, not always, but many times, is take that money and then give it to a mutual fund manager to manage for them. So it's kind of a hands-off thing for the advisor, but they're collecting fees. The mutual funds are collecting fees. The advisors are collecting fees. It's a great business model for them. So that's pretty much why it's being touted. Some of these other assets, the, the payout to the brokers may not be as high. You know, you mentioned some of these assets. And really, the, here's the, the, the truth is that the, the real successful people in the financial markets, they don't put their emphasis so much on picking stock. They put their emphasis on picking strategies and building portfolios of strategies. That might include stock. Certainly is not going to include mutual funds for the pros. They might include stock, but there are other assets. You mentioned futures, the foreign exchange market, options. Those are assets that have a number of benefits over the stock market for people. Uh, you also referenced the high cost of stocks out yeah. there. And, and there are a lot of stocks. I mean, you know, uh, Amazon's over $3,000 a share. Uh, Google over 2000 You know, those are very expensive stocks. Apple, what, around 130 uh, 135, somewhere in that range. Uh, 134, actually, when we're doing the show. Okay. 134 well, well, and a half. It was close. Uh, but th that means that if you want to put, a say, a 100-share position together, that leaves a lot of people out of the opportunity to be in the stock market. Mm -hmm. You can still access these higher-priced stocks. The, I mean, not access them, but access the the movement of them, the, the benefit that they may be providing through uh, an asset like options. 
Uh, you can participate in the stock market with futures, futures contracts. Futures and Forex are open 24 hours a day. Those are assets that are used by the institutions, by the pros on a regular basis. Uh, most people are familiar with Warren Buffett. Warren Buffett publicly will say you should just buy stock and hold on to it. This is a long-term thing, the same thing that, that the advisors are saying. Uh, but what he does with his money isn't necessarily that. He'll buy companies, but he also uses options on a very regular basis. He makes probably seven to $8 billion a year trading options. Those are leveraged assets. And what we mean by leverage is that every dollar that you are utilizing with one of these leveraged assets has a multiple of that dollar in what it can buy. So you ha you're putting a smaller amount of money up front and then controlling a much larger investment. It gives you the opportunity to have a higher rate of return, you know, using utilizing a, a smaller investment account. And uh, that could vary. The amount varies from broker to broker, but it really is a great way of maximizing the value of your money. And institutions use it on a regular basis. For, for us as traders, those markets really were designed for the big players, but now we can use them and, and they're available to anybody listening. Uh, but you always want to make sure that you know, you know what you're doing. This is when you're using the leveraged assets, that leverage can be a huge benefit to you. But you have to. The first thing you need to do is know how to make sure that you have a risk strategy in place so you're protected. You're right. And a lot of people like the stock market. You can still participate in the stock market with the futures market. You have the S&Ps, <clears throat> excuse me, the, the NASDAQ, the Dow. You can still trade them. You also have gold, oil, silver, copper. Al, my favorite? Lean hogs. I'll let you, I gave you the thunder, thunder that time. It was fun. <laughs> but, but it's just understanding these different opportunities, and that's what they are, is opportunities. Learning more about these different opportunities that are out there with the futures market, the options market. And Al, I want to continue the discussion about leverage in the next segment. But as I kicked off the show, I mentioned we were going to talk about short-term trading right. and longer-term trading. I want to get into the more longer term strategies because a lot of people that work want to utilize these longer term strategies because it's it's a little bit better um it's a better opportunity for them based on their time. So coming up next we're going to get into forex and also continue options. We'll be right back. <laughs> 